Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna start working with this project that you know was pro uh, provided by your colleague, and I'm going to show you how uh, what you have to do to set it up in such a way that you can render it without any problems. The process is so easy and so fast. You're gonna love working with Cinema for the MV Ray. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete. Um, because you're probably not going to need it, the cameras and everything. As you can see, and also I'm going to get rid of the material, because I don't want to have it. So we start from scratch. Now, say that we got the model imported from, uh, Vir uh, sorry, from Rhino to Cinema 4D, just like I showed you before. So it's in a null object, meaning that it's now grouped. Now we can start uh, rendering it, okay? So the rendering process, just as I showed you in uh, in uh, Cinema, f in sorry, in Rhino and V-Ray, is extremely simple and straightforward. What do we need to make a rendering? A light source, a camera, and a model. The model is right there. The camera and the light we need to create, okay? So it's super simple. Let's create first of all a light, and let's do it the easy way we are going to render with a sun system. Now, the sun system, it's a little bit complex to um, create at first, but once you do it once, you'll always remember it, and maybe what you can do, you can save it as a separate file so that you can use it over and over. It's super simple. In the new version of V-Ray, you don't have to do this anymore because we have created an object that you can just drag and drop into your viewport, okay? So let's start from scratch with this. I go to lights, infinite light. Now the infinite light, and you will notice the moment that you drop an infinite light into your um, 3D environment, what's going to happen is that you are going to see a uh, diverse shaded mode. And this is because um, cinema is trying to understand what this um, infinite light is doing in your viewport. To avoid that, go to display and change to something like quick shading lines. Then at this point you will have a flat shade and it'll be easier to read geometry that way. Now, as you can see, the, the, the infinite light is shooting forward and it's very difficult to, uh, to adjust. Just think about it. If I want to put it, say, um, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll have to turn it that way and then I have to change my axis and then turn it that way. It's just a lot of uh, time wasting. So what we can do, we can right click on the light itself, say Cinema 4D Tags, Target. Now, what the target does, it says to the light, please look into a specific direction. Now this direction, we don't have it yet. How do we create a direction? We do it by placing a null object inside our viewport. What is a null object? A null object is only a placeholder, meaning it doesn't exist. It's only a point. How do we do this? In the modeling tab, instead of cube, we click and hold and we go to null. Now, if I go back to my tag of the light, I can drag and drop the null inside the target object. And look what happened. The light all of a sudden is looking down to the null. Now, look how easy it is to set the light in the position that we want. With the middle mouse button, I go from the top view. I click on the light itself. And with the move tool, I can click anywhere in the viewport and just change the position of the light the way I like it. Then if I want the light to be a little bit higher, I change it from the side. But this is pretty much it. So I want to have the light around here. Great. Now the position of my light was defined extremely simple. As I told you already in the last class, what we need to do is that we need to work with everything proprietary of V-Ray. That means that the light that we have just generated now is not a V-Ray light. 
How do we change this to V-Ray Light? Right click, V-Ray Bridge, V-Ray Light. Now, what the program does, it recognizes automatically that this is a sun. The only thing that we need to do is not to forget to enable the shadows, because a sun without the shadows is basically an atomic bomb. And that's it. So in theory, we could already render. The problem is that we don't have a camera, right? Because to make a rendering, you need a light source, a model, and a camera. Very good. Did I repeat these things enough for you to, to remember them? Good. I'm proud of you guys. Now, let's place the camera just like if we were photographers, OK? Now, if you want to take, say, a good portrait of a person, how do you point the camera on the face of the person? Do you do it looking up? Do you do it looking down? Or do you do it looking, you know? We left to go back to this because I've seen something extremely stupid on TV, but I don't want to put it on the tutorial. <laughs> um, but in theory, you want to have the camera frontal, okay? Because you don't want to see any double chin of the person, and you don't want to see, especially in case of girls, you know, parts that are not related to the portrait itself, unless this is your goal, of course. <coughs> So let's place a camera which is straight onto the model. How do we place a camera? I already showed you last week. We click on the camera. Now, the camera is basically placed in the direction that you're looking at the model. That means that if I now navigate my scene, my camera is up there. What can I do to look through the camera? I got to go up here into this little icon, and now I'm inside. And the way you recognize it is because you don't see the borders of the camera anymore. You see? If, say, I was not in the camera, now you'll see the borders of the camera. If I say I'm in the camera, you don't see them anymore. Okay? Now, let's place the camera in such a way that it's perpendicular to the model itself. Okay? How do we do this? This is super simple in Cinema 4D. First of all, let's click the camera. Let's click on the selection tool. And let's zero the rotation, because we don't want it to be rotated, right? Enter. And now the camera is straight. If I go into any other view, you will see that my camera is straight, you see? So now, all I have to do is to move the camera in place where I want it. And I'm done. Isn't that fantastic? So much easier than, you know, when we were working with Rhino and uh, V-Ray. Now, the problem with Rhino and V-Ray, as I already told you, is that there are no such native tools for rendering like in Cinema 4D. And this is the reason why I would really encourage you guys to make the switch. Guys, I feel like I'm losing you. Everything okay? Do you have any questions? Good. So, um, let's just first find the position of the camera. And then we're going to stop the video so that you can take a breather. And we don't make it too long so that you have to go through too much material. Okay? So now what we're going to do... We are going to position the camera, say, in the middle from where this chair is. You don't have to be super precise. And maybe at something like, say, 150 centimeters from the floor. If you go into the position X, Y, Z, you can do this by hand. So I click on 150. I go back to my camera and boom, I'm right there. So now, since I'm happy with this view, what do we do? Right click, Cinema 4D Tags, Protection. Why do we want to protect the camera? Because look, if I'm now navigating, the camera doesn't move, you see? To navigate away from this view, I have to click on the white icon. So now I have a light, 
I have a camera, all I have to do is start rendering, okay? But, first of all, we have forgot something, what did we forget? We need to use everything native of V-Ray, meaning that the camera needs to be a V-Ray camera. So, right click, V-Ray bridge, V-Ray physical camera. And for now, for the part that is about uh, setting the camera for Cinema 4D, this is enough. We're gonna continue later with the actual rendering.